J-E-L-L-O. The Jell-O program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Kenny Baker, and yours truly, Don Wilson. The orchestra opens a program with roller skating on a rainbow. <laughs> You all know how a plain room can be brightened right up with a bowl full of vivid summer flowers. Well, a plain meal can be brightened up that same way with a mold full of gay, shimmering jello. Perhaps rich crimson strawberry jello, for right now it's strawberry time, and a grand way to enjoy the fresh berries is to serve them with strawberry jello. It's just as appetizing and delicious as the fresh fruit itself. It echoes that fragrant, tempting goodness and makes a lovely picture to adorn a simple meal. A mold of strawberry jello garnished with fresh berries. And all six delicious jello flavors bring you this same refreshing taste. So cool and delightful, especially with hot weather on the way. Strawberry, raspberry, cherry, orange, lemon, and lime. They're filled with extra rich flavor. They glow with cheerful summery color. Just be sure to get genuine jello and don't accept any substitutes. Look for those big red letters on the box. They spell jello. Roller Skating on a Rainbow, played by the orchestra. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we bring you our own movie star who has just finished another epic at Paramount and is nervously awaiting the preview, Jack Benny. Thank you, thank you. Hello again, this is Jack Benny talking, and Don, I'm not a bit worried about the outcome of my latest screen triumph. But you're wrong about one thing. The picture isn't finished yet. Oh, it isn't? No, we have another week to go. You see, I've been having some story trouble. And I don't want to mention any names, but after all, I'm the star of the picture, and there's a certain party that's having a little too much to do in it. <laughs> and if this certain party... Well, our maestro isn't here yet, so if you're talking about Phil Harris, why don't you come out and say so? Because he's got 18 stool pigeons sitting right in back of me, <laughs> and you know it. <laughs> They're disguised as musicians. Uh, look, Don, the way the picture ends now, Phil Harris wins the girl and marries her. Now, as long as I'm the star, don't you think I ought to win the girl? Well, Jack, there are several angles to consider. Now, in the first place, Phil is much younger than you are. That's just the point. He's in no rush. <laughs> But, but I got to get rolling before it's too late, my dear. <laughs> and another thing has come up. Mr. Hornblow, the producer, wants to use Rochester in the picture. Imagine Rochester, my butler, an actor. That's all I need. Well, Jack, I think it's a grand idea. I know, Don, but what'll they pay Rochester? Maybe $50 a week. And by the time he gets 25 and I get 25, it's not worth it to me. <laughs> What does it amount to? Well, uh, tell me, Jack, does Rochester know about this offer yet? I think so. Yesterday, he went out and made a down payment on a gold tooth. <laughs> Not only that, he's so lazy, he just had a sidecar built on the vacuum cleaner. <laughs> anyway. Oh, hello, Kenny. Hello. What's the matter with you? Darn that apple machine out in the hall. What's wrong with the apple machine? Well, I just put a nickel in and a worm came out. <laughs> Oh, that's too bad. Somebody's going to hear about this outrage, believe me. Oh, Kenny, what's a nickel? Don't be such a little tightwad. Look who's talking. <laughs> hmm. uh, where were we, Don, before this big problem came up? Well, uh, you were complaining about Phil getting the girl at the finish of your picture. Oh, yes. Well, that's what's holding up the story, and now I'm trying to get it changed. Trying to get what changed? Oh, hello, Mary. Say, Mary, you were over at Paramount when we rehearsed the ending of our picture. Do you think it's right for Phil to marry, to marry the girl when I'm the star? Of course not. You see? Phil ought to be the star. <laughs> I don't mean that. 
Imagine Phil winning the girl. Why, he's not the marrying kind. Oh, I don't know about that. Why, Mary, you know very well that Phil is the type of fella that plays with a woman's emotions, toys with her affections, breaks her heart, and then when he's through, discards her like an old shoe. You know the way that kind of a guy treats women? Yes, and we love it. <laughs> I know you do. That's the trouble with women. They don't appreciate a good man. I'm the rat type myself. <laughs> Oh, sure, sure, a fine rodent. <laughs> anyway, getting back to my picture, the more I think about that ending, Don, the more I... Come in. Special delivery for Mary Livingston. Uh, here, boy. Thanks. Hmm. Oh, Jack, this letter's from Mama. How do you know? The man on the stamp is laughing. <laughs> oh. Read us your mother's letter, Mary. Yeah, I'll bet there's some hot news in it. What's the Ouija board of Plainfield got to say? <laughs> <laughs> Here it is oh. uh, Plainfield, New Jersey, May 19th My dear daughter, Mary My, it's a scream already <laughs> Continue uh, Just a few lines to thank you for your nice letter And the big bottle of perfume which you sent me on Mother's Day It's lovely and I smell like anything <laughs> She would pour the whole bottle on uh, Father's Day will be here in a couple of weeks And Papa wants me to remind you that he needs a right sock a right sock Doesn't he need a left one too? Yeah, but Papa hates to impose on me Oh, oh. that's very sweet of him Your sister Ethel and her husband are back from their honeymoon But we think she needs new glasses As we are quite positive this is not the same man she left with <laughs> My goodness, they ought to find out Don't you think so? The happy couple are going to live with us until your brother-in-law can find a job. This may take some time, as he is an Indian scout by trade. <laughs> Fine prospects there. Oh, I must tell you, we went to New York the other day to see the World's Fair, and was it crowded. Oh. I lost your father in Japan and found him in General Motors. <laughs> Well, that was quite a trip there. The attractions are simply marvelous. They have a big water show there with a hundred beautiful bathing girls. So I lost your father again. <laughs> well, I don't blame him. Quiet. Oh. Uh, no other news at present except your Uncle Herman, who is learning to fly, dropped in the house the other day. <laughs> hmm. We'll write you again next week. Meanwhile, if this letter is a smash hit, please have Jack send me a check. <laughs> Mary, I don't ask you to read them. Uh, regards to all, your loving mother, on the beam, Livingston. <laughs> she always has to get cute when she signs her name. <laughs> well, let's get on with the program. Hey, Kenny, if you can forget about your great financial loss in the apple machine, how about doing a song? Don't get fresh or I won't sing at all. <laughs> what? What did you say? I said, if you want a nice, fresh song, I'll sing it all. Oh. I misunderstood you. Go ahead. Eight bells and all is well Off goes the nursery line We're all at the railing baby is sailing, sailing for a dreamland tonight. Ship ahoy, my little skipper, the Sandman's calling, don't be Please don't sail too far away At the foot of your bed is your faithful little crew It's your own puppy dog Keeping watch the whole night through Sail away, my little 
good night and pleasant dreams to you. Little man, you're crying. I know why you're blue. Someone took your kitty car away. Time to go to sleep now, little man. You've had a busy day. Johnny won your marbles. Tell you what we'll do. Dad'll buy you new ones right away. Time you should be dreaming, little man. You've had a busy day. Sail away, my little skipper. Good night and pleasant dreams. was Little Skipper, sung by Kenny Baker, which he did very well. That was really excellent. Darn that apple machine. <laughs> Kenny, stop worrying about it. If it'll make you any happier, I'll take a nickel out of my pocket and give it to you right now. Shall I phone the newsreels? <laughs> that won't be necessary. I just hate to see a kid like that be so cheap. Well, you're as bad as he is. Every time you give a waitress a little dime tip, you hold her hand for half an hour. Now, wait a minute, Mary. Now, wait a minute. Let me ask you something. Did you personally ever see me hold a waitress's hand? Yes. And now, folks, for our feature attraction tonight... <laughs> uh, we will continue with... Yes, I did. All right, you answered me. <laughs> for our feature attraction tonight, we will continue with the second and final episode of... Oh, hello, Phil. Hiya, Jackson. Were you worried about me? Well, I wasn't exactly worried, Phil, but I thought it'd be kind of nice if you dropped in sometime during our program and made a stab at earning your salary. <laughs> of course, I realize now that you're in the cinema, your radio career means very little to you. Are you still beefing about the picture? No, I'm not beefing. Why, Jack, I wouldn't even be in the picture if it weren't for you. You asked me to be in it. Phil, I asked you to be in one short scene at the opening. I didn't expect you to stay for eight reels. <laughs> You move in like a relative. <laughs> oh, I haven't got so much to do in the picture. You haven't? Why, even in that big fog scene in London where you're not supposed to see anybody, you have to walk around wearing a neon hat. <laughs> but you know what really kills me? Here, I'm the star, and my stooge marries Dorothy L'Amour. It doesn't make sense. But Jack, Dorothy wanted it that way. What do you mean? She said she doesn't like to do love scenes with you. Oh, she doesn't, eh? No, she claims you're too masculine. You're too rough. She says you're the brute type. Brute? No kidding? <laughs> you mean... You mean Dorothy said that? Why, sure. She says that when it comes to love scenes, you're a regular caveman. Oh, I... She said that? <laughs> are, are you sure? Absolutely. Why, man, when you've got a girl in your arms, you don't know your own strength. Well, I, I have been eating my steaks pretty rare lately. I, <laughs> and I guess that medicine ball hasn't hurt me any, but I... Oh, so I'm a brood, eh? Some caveman. You couldn't find a muscle in a shore dinner. <laughs> Oh, yes, I could. Well, thanks for the information, Phil. Now I know I can change the finish of the picture. All I have to do is tell Dorothy that I'll watch myself a little. Well, let's get on with our show. As I said before, folks, we're going to continue with the second episode of our stirring drama. Gee, I can't get over Dorothy being afraid of me like that. <laughs> the, uh, 
the second episode of our... Gee, I must remember that women are fragile and delicate. <laughs> the second episode of our... Oh, yes, yes. The second episode of our stirring drama of military life in faraway India. That sensational RKO screen achievement, Gunga Dean. <laughs> Thank you, Mouse Face. <laughs> now, as last week, as last week, I will be Gunga Dean, Kenny will be Private Baker, and Mary, you will be sort of a Kipling again this week and recite the poem. Okay, Hercules. Hmm. Now, this will go on immediately after a number by... <coughs> uh, see who it is, Mary. Oh, hello! Well, gee whiz, how are you? So nice of you to call. What's new, kid? Yes? Yes? Who is it, Mary? Mr. Hornblow, it's for you. <laughs> Give me that phone. What's new, kid, to my producer? Uh, hello, Mr. Hornblow. Yes? Well, uh, well, look, Mr. Hornblow, I've been thinking about that Rochester matter, and I don't see how I can allow him to go in the picture. Uh... Well, well, sure, he'd be very good, but... I know, but... Now, look, Mr. Hornblow. I know, but... 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 Ladies and gentlemen, while Jack is listening to Mr. Hornblow, let me remind you about our product, Jell-O. But... It has that extra rich flavor. But, but... But it is not only economical and easy to make... But... It also comes in six delicious flavors, strawberry, raspberry, cherry... But, but... Orange, lemon, and lime. But... Mr. Hornblow. So look for the big red letters on the horn. I mean, blow. I mean, box. My goodness! <laughs> Will you stop shouting down? I'm trying to talk. Now, I'll, uh, I'll tell you what I'll do, Mr. Hornblow. You can have Rochester in the picture on one condition. You've got to change the script so that I marry Dorothy L'Amour. What? Oh, Mr. Hornblow, I realize that, but I won't get her all black and blue. <laughs> yeah. See, I'm an actor. I can restrain myself. Is it a deal? Okay, then Rochester goes in the picture. Goodbye. Can you imagine that fellow Dorothy told Mr. Hornblow that I'm a caveman, too? Gee, it's all over the lot, you know? <laughs> Well, Phil, old boy, how about playing a number so we can get on with our sketch? I'll do nothing of the kind. Imagine taking me out of the finish of the picture. Fine pal. Now, don't worry. You'll be in that wedding scene, Phil. I'll fix it so you're a flower girl. <laughs> now, play before I slug you. You know my strength. Oh, that's right. Hit it, boys. <laughs> The Ladies in Love, played by Phil Harris and his orchestra. And now, folks... Wait a minute, Jack. Wait. How'd you like it? Well, Phil, if I say it was good, it'll go to your head. And if I say it was bad, it'll start a routine. So let's just forget it. <laughs> oh, by the way, I forgot to tell you, in our play tonight, you're going to be the head of the Hindu bandits. In fact, you're a cutthroat. So just play it straight. You know? Okay. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, for the final installment of Gunga Dean. 
As you may remember, last week, Gunga and Private Baker were sent to discover the hideout of the Hindu bandits. And as the scene ended, we left them both on the desert without food or water. Curtain music. Take it, Mary. Now, in India's desert land, where there's nothing but hot sand, we find our punch-drunk hero, Gunga Dean. Private Baker is there with him. They ain't got water. They ain't got rhythm. And the buzzards up above them sure look mean. So it's Dean, Dean, Dean. Take it, Jack. I'm running out of steam. Oh. Oh, I don't think I can go on much longer, Baker. The desert's got me this time. Fourteen days on this burning sand without water. Fourteen days. You hear that, Baker? Fourteen days without water. What's the record? <laughs> Nine days. It's held by a camel in Egypt. <laughs> but we must carry on, Baker. We must carry on. Uh, two weeks without food or drink. Two weeks, uh, weeks on this infernal desert. Fourteen days under this burning, blistering sun. Well, we got a nice tan. <laughs> I don't need a tan. I'm a Hindu. <laughs> what a desolate place this desert is. How far away from everything. I'll bet even Mrs. Roosevelt has never been here. <laughs> Come on, Baker. Let's make for those mountains right ahead of us. Chin up. Remember, we're Bengal Lancers. Hey, Baker, look. Here comes a camel with a man and a girl on it. Oh, yes. And look at that sign. Just married. Whoa. Hello there. Hey, buddy, how far is it to Niagara Falls? 12,000 miles straight ahead. Well, we better hurry. Giddy up, Abdul. <laughs> oh, so they're going to Niagara Falls, eh? Water. Water. That's what I want, water. Hmm, there are those buzzards again. They're after us, Baker. They're after us. Yes, we must not let them get us. We've got a duty to perform, and by heaven, we're going to do it. We must find a hot eye of those bandits or die, die like rats on this forsaken desert. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I knew I should have taken that line. <laughs> Look, look, Baker, here we are at the foot of the mountains. I wonder if... I wonder if... Listen. What do you make of that, Baker? Catchy little thing, ain't it? <laughs> well, you know what that means? We finally reached the hideout of the bandits. Now be quiet, and we'll sneak up on them. So they reached the place at last, down by the mountain pass, where the bandits are a-lurking. Oh, what thugs. So let's listen to their boss which is played by Phil Herr Ross. Herr Ross? As he tells his natives how to cut a rug. So it's rug, rug, rug. Take it, Chief, you corny jitterbug. Now listen, men. We're gonna calabadaz, booga gooba, koosh, harani. Is that clear? Shukaraka. Did you hear that, Baker? Shukaraka. That means they're gonna attack the Bengal Lancers at dawn. Gee, I thought I meant long time no see. That's Shukarika. <laughs> now be quiet. Listen, men, and get this straight. So guy. So guy. So guy. So guy. Want some lances, mommy? <laughs> oh, yeah? Well, I never attack our regiment. Remember what the captain told me to do, Baker? Yeah, you're supposed to blow your bugle as a warning. And that's just what I'm gonna do. Get hot, Gunga. One, two. <laughs> did you hear that, man? Where did that bugle come from? Sears and Roebuck, $1.98. Baker! There they are, man. Grab them. Oh, no, wait a minute. <laughs> We're captured. <laughs> All right, quit jiving, man. I'll take care of these guys. Now, look here, Chief. We're not the fellas you want. You speak English, don't you? Sure, I'm hap. <laughs> well, look, bub. <laughs> We're just a couple of wandering, harmless Hindus. 
a couple of magazine salesmen working our way through the desert. Please give us food and drink, and we'll be on our way. Wait a minute. If you're a magazine salesman, why have you got that horn around your neck? All right, then. I sell fish. <laughs> Come on, Baker, let's go. Hey, we going to spy on the bandits first? Baker! <laughs> Spies, eh? I knew it. Take them to my temple, men. Your temple? Yes, there it is, that big white building over there. Some temple. Wiltshire Bowl, no cover charge. <laughs> Let's run, Baker. Yeah. Grab them, men. All right, all right. Now drag them inside. Mm, it's a fine way to get customers. <laughs> okay, we're coming. So they captured Gung and Baker and dragged them in the bowl. They couldn't see the floor show because they sat behind a pole. Now Gunger is from hunger and his tongues are hanging out and Baker's sitting with him. What will happen? Let's find out. Oh, water. Water, where's a waiter? Well, how about it, Gunga? You might as well come clean. Are you going to tell us where your regiment is or not? No, no. I don't care what you do to me. I'm a Bengal Lancer, and I'll never tell. Never. Ah, uh, yeah, you'll talk, brother. Where's your regiment? I won't tell. I won't tell. Torture me, kill me. But my lips are sealed. Mine are chapped. <laughs> I don't want to die, Chief. I don't want to die. Give me some water. No, no. Not until you talk. I won't talk. I won't. All right. Then I'm going to torture you as a human being has never been tortured before. What? You'll suffer. You'll squirm. You'll die a thousand deaths before I'm through. Oh, my goodness. Come on, men. Let's give it to him. We'll see whether he talks or not. Down in the Maddy in the Ito Bitty Poo, Pam P. Ito Bitty, and a Mama Bitty. Not that. Not that! No, no! Brand me with a hot iron! Throw me in the straight pit! Feed me to the crocodile! Not that! Water! Water! That's what I want! Water! Boop, boop, did him, dot him, water! Water! That's what I want! Boop, did him, dot him, water! Oh, I can't stand it any longer. Boop, boop, I'm only human. Bottom. I'll tell. And they bam, I'll tell. And they bam. Stop that music. I'll do the feed. I'll tell. Ha, 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 I'll tell. All right, Gunga. Give us the information we want and you can go free. Okay, Chief. Our regiment is located about three miles <laughs> south of Taltutta. Utant missing. Come on, Baker, wet's dough. Nothing doing. Nothing doing. I just ordered a twimp cocktail. Oh, well, I'll have one, too. Take it, Mary. So it's dween, dween, dween. Those itty-bitty fitties make oo squeam. Though we belted oo and fade oo, I can hardly blame oo. Oo's a better man than I am, and I'm a girl. <laughs> Is that so? Play, Phil. <laughs> What is a baseball game to do with a fruit cocktail? Well, I'll tell you. If you've been sitting out in the hot sun watching a ball game all afternoon, you'll be mighty glad to start your dinner with a cool, refreshing fruit cocktail made with shimmering lime jello, fresh oranges, and grapefruit. Or you can serve it for a dessert. It's delicious either way. And here's how to make it. Dissolve one package of lime jello in one pint of hot water. Turn into a shallow pan and chill until firm. Then take a sharp knife and cut the jello into shiny little sea green cubes that are cool and tempting. Now, in individual sherbet glasses, arrange a layer of iron sections, add a layer of grapefruit sections, and top it off with a layer of jello cubes. It's gay as a rainbow with oranges, grapefruit, and shining green lime jello. And you'll go for that real extra rich fruit flavor, which makes lime jello taste so good. So ask your grocer tomorrow for some lime jello and try this new fruit cocktail. This is the last number of the 34th program in the new Jello series, and we will be with you again next Sunday night at the same time. Meanwhile, folks, be sure and listen in Tuesday night to We the People, sponsored by those two grand preparations for homemade ice cream Jello ice cream powder and Jello freezing mix. Mmm, water. Water. That's what I want. Water. You could use some soap and towels, too. Good night, folks. <laughs> J-E-L-L-O. Kenny Baker appears on the Jell-O podcast and Kurt Z. Merle production. This is the National Broadcasting Company. <laughs>